Hi, this is Flash, and I'm here in Vegas with Chris, a fellow uh, handyman, um, here to um, to talk to him to see what his experience has been. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Hi, how are you doing, Flash? Good. Um, so, uh, how long uh, how long were you a handyman? Um, you know, I think I, I started the business around 2013, uh -huh. and uh, I actually still have the business license, but I'm, I'm just not really I'm not really working as much as I used to. But I probably uh, I did it steadily for uh, I'd say about you know 15, 16 months. Okay. Okay. And what um, was there anything that happened that uh, I mean, is there a reason why? Is it because work was slow, or is there a reason why you weren't? Uh, why you're not really focusing on being a handyman? It's a good question. Um, you know, work was slow initially when I first started the mm -hmm. business, and I mean that's actually why I started it. Um, I, I got kind of tired looking for these, you know, these uh, dead end jobs out there. And somebody asked me instead of trying to go and, and and you know look for all these interviews and these opportunities, why don't you just create an opportunity for yourself? So um, that's what I did initially, and, and I was really successful. Uh, I at least I, I think um, you know for the first year that I did it but uh, just what I came to understand with the business was that there were all of these uh, you know laws and regulations that that uh, can really deter you from you know from growing mm -hmm. uh, as a being in the handyman business and um, I had to, I kind of had to, I was having a difficult time, you know, working around some of them. So well, what are some of the laws do you found, you know, that you found most difficult to work around? Um, you know, a, a lot of, a lot of the way that the, some of the laws work, at least out here in Nevada, um, they, they kind of prevent, uh, someone like myself or, you know, a handyman from, from, they can prevent a handyman from, from being successful in a lot of ways. Um, what I mean by that is that uh, uh, as a deterrent, you know, you can't advertise. So it becomes very difficult if you want to expand and market and grow, you know, grow your business, develop your business. You look for different ways, you know, to market your business um, that, that are going to be cost effective. Well, one of the things we can't do out here, we can't market. Hmm. So. And, and who told you that you couldn't advertise and market? Um, just through, uh, I, I guess, through reading about what some of the different regulations are, um, you know, some of the regulations at the contractors board, um, you know, has uh, uh, kind of implemented over the years. Um, Maybe an interpretation. Uh, I. I guess, you know, what, what do you mean by interpretation? Well, you know, I mean, like, uh, when I read the laws in the state of, that, in, in the state of California and Nevada and, and several other states, um, I read that you have to disclose that you're not a contractor if you're not a contractor. But you're allowed to, you're allowed to advertise to an extent as long as you disclose to the public that you're not a licensed contractor and you're not held to the same guidelines as a contractor. So that when they hire you, they're hiring you as a handyman. Yeah, I, you know what? I'm, I'm not. I mean, I'm, I'm under the impression out here that I can't advertise um, for any type of you know scope of work. Uh, it, it falls under the construction category um, unless I have that license mm -hmm. to perform you know the work. Okay. So I was under the impression that I could. I actually did get in trouble for advertising. Um, but now, you know, after after uh, doing a little bit of um, you know research, I understand now that I, I can't advertise. I can't go on Craigslist and say things like you know rent a handyman or uh, home home repair or you know. So I I can you can actually get in trouble out here for doing something like that. Um, well, what we're trying to do is rectify that. We're trying to make changes. We're trying to, um, you know, inform. Um, we're, uh, you know, we're kind of on a mission to, to help handymen. Um, you know, is there anything that, that you think an organization like ours could do to help the handyman out in Nevada? You know, I think, I think there are a lot of handymen out here. 
There's a lot of people doing it. Um, and I'm totally for that. I believe in a right to work. I think everybody's got a constitutional right to work, to earn money, to use the skills that you've, you, that you've learned, that you've developed, um, to, to earn money if you want to. Um, you know, I think one of the greatest things that I would have benefited from and may have benefited from if I, if I had known that you guys were available earlier, um, you know, is the information that you provide. As far as actually sitting down with somebody and, and explaining and going over what some of the details are regarding the law, because that's an important factor to consider anytime you try to start your, you know, a handyman business. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, actually knowing what to do if you're ever in a situation where uh, you know, a contractor's board is conducting a sting operation or something like that, because they do happen, you know, and it's just, uh, it's, it's a probability. It probably, if you're going to do this, it could happen one way or another, especially if you're advertising like I did on Craigslist. Well, you know, they, they, they talked about stings and, and how they locate companies for stings and one of the references that they use is advertising. And they say when a guy puts a, an ad on Craigslist, then they, you know, they red flag it and then they go after him. So I understand you were involved in a sting. Is there, is there something you want to tell about your sting, maybe help others who, who might not think that uh, it can happen to them? Well, I mean, it can happen to anybody. Obviously, if you're out there and you don't have a contractor's license and, uh, you know, and you're following the law, like, like most of us do that take this business seriously, if you're a handyman. Um, if, if, you're, if you're out there and you're trying to perform work and you're following the law and, you know, and you're advertising on Craigslist like I did and you happen to be caught up in something like that where they, they are conducting a, a sting operation, I mean, you can, you, can get, you can get in a lot of trouble for it. You'll have to go to court, you can face, uh, you know, fines, jail time, I mean, so I think in being in a situation like that, uh, learning as much as you can about the law and understanding what the rules, what the regulations are, what the laws are, and also being a part of a reputable association um, that can educate you on what some of those laws are, I think that that's probably the utmost uh, importance for did, did you feel at all that there was an intention by the state to intimidate you in any way? Uh, definitely, uh, I was intimidated. If I can, you know, if I can be honest, um, I did feel intimidated by by the by the state um, when they brought the charges against me. Um, it actually it hindered my uh, I, I would say my growth and my development. Um, you know, as a uh, as a business, it, it hindered that growth. Um, it was really stressful the whole, you know, the whole uh, ordeal. But uh, you know, aside from all the charges against, you know, being being uh, conducted against me by the state, um, they were they continued to try and set me up in other stings mm -hmm. by calling me on the phone, pretending to be somebody that they weren't, you know. And I was I was fearful that I could, you know, about taking other jobs. I didn't want to take jobs with people that I was referred to take, you know, the help out or something. So it, it did kind of affect the way that I thought about the, you know, being a handyman altogether, as I'm sure a lot of people that go through this do. So. So in a way, did they intimidate you out of business? Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm scared of anything like that, but, uh, I, I just I think that there are improvements that uh, that like this state could take, um, you know, to try and. Uh, I'm not saying that they need to be lenient. They they do perform a service to contractors board. It is absolutely necessary. I do believe what they you know what they do is it's it's absolutely necessary. The people out there that that take advantage of other people, but for the people that are trying to follow the law. They've got the insurance, they've got the business, they've sought out, you know, a reputable association to be a part of. I think they really need to um, look at these people as, as, as business owners, you know, that are trying to conduct a, 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 an honest business right. and they're trying to obey the law. And, uh, you know, they're not, you know, just 
criminals out there trying to take advantage of everybody. Mm -hmm. So now you, um, I understand you hired attorneys to, to help you. Um, so prior to hiring your attorney, you might have been a little bit more intimidated than once you started learning more about what your rights were and things like that. Is that would that be correct? I, I was somewhat aware of what my rights were um, before the charge, um, after going through that process and, and uh, being educated by the, uh, the by the attorney that defended me um, or attorneys that have, that defended me. Um, I just became more and more aware okay. of what some of the laws are and how, how they're kind of, how you can massage them. Mm -hmm. There are loopholes to help uh, people like handymen um, to get around some of the laws. Because um, when the contractor's board goes after you, uh, they go after you for everything you got. Right. You know, they're ruthless, yeah. they can be. So, so thinking back, if you, if you were part of the UHA or, or a reputable association, yeah, um, and you were, you know, part of an organization with, you know, you know, you know, several other, you know, businesses like you, and were educated and, and were given the, you know, the information you needed, you know, regarding laws and rights and and knew that you had the backing of an association, if you did go through a sting, do you think it might have helped you maybe um, be a little bit less intimidated, maybe um, help you through the process a little bit? Well, um, or maybe even avoid the process. You got, you know, you, you guys were supportive. I mean, I did talk to you guys after everything happened. You were, you were supportive. I was kind of encouraged by my wife that found the UHA. Um, online as an association. She encouraged me to talk to you guys and you, you know, you did help me out a little bit. Um, I think, you know, that there's power in numbers. Mm -hmm. And anytime you have an association or a group of people, you know, with a board um, trying to look out for, you know, the, this association's best interests, mm -hmm. um, I, I think that that really speaks volumes. So it's how the contractors board got started in every state. Right. You know, I think that there should be a, a board for handymen. Um, maybe some people look at this and think, well, that sounds ridiculous. Just go get your contractor's license, you know? There's a lot of people out there that can't get their contractor's license. Either they don't have the money to front for the license, mm -hmm. they can't afford it, you know? They, they're, they have a, a, a history of bankruptcy or something. There's a lot of people mm -hmm. that can't do that out there. These people deserve to work just as much as the uh, the people that can obtain their license right. do. So criminal criminal history or criminal history, a lot of, bankruptcy, a lot of whatever. Exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of deterrence. Um, so I mean, that's what we're about. It's all about you know helping you know helping guys that have a true skill that want to run a real business and and have insurance and a and a business license and and just want you know the right to work and and. You know support their families so um, you know I appreciate you I appreciate you know you talking to me and and sharing you know what you've gone through and and I think that you know the words you say go a long way um, uh, you know I just uh, you know we're here we want to I, I think that one of the most important things that Chris said was that that the whole thing about a group of people a group of numbers an organization of individuals or businesses that work together for a common goal, um, you know, that's the intention. We come together, help maybe make changes, um, but uh, inform and, and work together and, and, you know, and make a living. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. All right, man.